Hello friends, welcome back to Dr. Jaggi's Academy. In the last two chapters, we discussed about the homeostasis and the feedback system, and then what are the cell injury causing agents. So continuing continuing with that chapter related to cell injury, today I am going to discuss about the cell adaptations, which is a very important topic. So now, if we go for the different things which can happen if we if we are having a injury causing agent, let's say we are having a cell, some injurious agent come, then there is an option for a cell that cell adapts to that cell injury causing agent. But if cell is not able to adapt, then cell will going to have some kind of an injury, either in the form of a reversible form, that is a reversible injury, or in the form of an irreversible cell injury. But today's topic is related on the cell adaptations. So we will focus on that one. Uh, but before that one, I just want to go, what is a meaning of a reversible cell injury? A reversible cell injury means, uh, if we remove the cell injury causing agent, then cell reverts back to the original thing. That is, it becomes normal one. So that means, cell comes out of the injury to the normal state. But in an irreversible injury, if we remove the cell injury causing agent, even then cell doesn't come out of that injury. So that is an irreversible cell injury. So obviously if it is irreversible cell injury, then cell is going to die. There are two mechanisms of the cell death we will discuss in the forthcoming uh, lectures. One is called as the necrosis and second is called as the apoptosis. So now, focusing on the cell adaptations. So there are different kinds of cell adaptations that we are going to be discussing, basically the four types. First is the atrophy, second is the hypertrophy, third is the hyperplasia and fourth is the metaplasia. First, it is the atrophy. Atrophy, that means, let's say we are having these kind of the normal cells, cell injury causing agent is there, then there is a shrinkage of the cell size. Cell size become very smaller in size. That is called as atrophy. So this is the definition. Cell shrinks, the size of the cell is reduced or decreased, that is called as atrophy. So now we will study what can be the reasons for the atrophy. Now one of the very important reasons is the workload. If the cell, if the if the uh, organs are not given some workload, they are going to go under atrophy like the muscles. If we are not giving, uh, we are not taking any work from our muscles, then they are going to shrink. Then loss of innervation. Very common example is let's say polio person. If the, the person is a polio, suffering from polio, then the limb shrinks. The, uh, because the innervation is there, nerve supply is reduced. So a decreased nerve supply is a very important cause of the atrophy. Then third is the blood supply if it is not there. Even then the cell shed tends to shrink, organ tends to shrink. Then if the nutrition is not there, then hormones are not there. That means, and that means there is a decrease in endocrine stimulation or if there is an aging. So these are the different reasons that may lead to atrophy, one kind of the cell adaptation when the cell shrinks. But opposite kind of the cell adaptation is called as hypertrophy, hyper means excessive. That means if this is a normal cell, the cells will increase in the size. That is increase in the cell size in the cell uh, tissue of this uh, tissue or the organ. That means if a cell tissue or the organ increases in the size, that is called as the hypertrophy. So now what can be the different types and the causes of hypertrophy? First, I am discussing about the physiological, that is non-disease, but there is no disease, even then uh, the size of the cell may be increased. Number one, uh, one of the important reasons is the functional demand is increased in the body. Uh, demand is increased like I, I told in the atrophy, we are not taking uh, taking work from of our muscles, muscles are going to shrink. But on the opposite side, if you are taking a lot of work from the muscles, like the persons who are going for the energy, they tend to develop the muscles. It, it is a, basically a hypertrophy. Now, increase in the hormonal release. If the more of the hormones are released, then the obviously the group, uh, cell organs, uh, cells, organs are going to increase in the size. Now, one of the examples can be the increase in the uterus size in the case of the pregnancy because the uterus is increased to accommodate the fetus. So, this is a physiological, non-diseased, but there can be the pathological, that is a diseased one also. Like in case of the heart, heart size may be increased and the increase in the heart size is called as a hypercardic hypertrophy. This is a diseased one. 
it can happen if the person is suffering from hypertension, very high blood pressure for a long period of time, or a disease which is called as congestive heart failure. We will discuss these chapters. These are the diseases when we will discuss what the cardiovascular system. Another kind of the another kind of the cell adaptation is called as hyperplasia. In hyperplasia, let's say these are the normal cells. Now you can see the number of cells they have increased. So increase in the number of the cells. Remember hypertrophy was the increase in the size of the cell. In this condition there is an increase in the number of the cells in an organ or a tissue. That is hyperplasia. So what can be the causes, types of the hyperplasia? Again, like hypertrophy I will discuss two types. Physiological, non-diseased and diseased one. First, physiological. Enlargement of the breast during the puberty or the pregnancy because of the increase in the hormones. Compensatory hyperplasia. Compensatory hyperplasia means one of the typical examples is let's say you cut the liver, some part of the liver is removed, then the remaining cells of the liver they start proliferating, they start increasing the number, so the size of the liver will be restored. Same is the case with the kidney. You remove some of the cells of the kidney, kidney, the remaining cells of the kidney will start regenerating, they will start multiplying and they increase their number. So that kind of a thing is called as compensatory hyperplasia. Third is the pathological, diseased one. So one of the example I am telling is case is the nodular hyperplasia of the prostate. That means it is also called as benign prostatic hypertrophy. In short term it is called as BPH. It is actually a disease of the aged male when there is an increase in the size of the prostate gland which ultimately produces the urinary troubles. So these are the uh, different types of hyperplasia, physiological, compensatory or pathological. Now another kind of the uh, adaptation I'm discussing that is called as metaplasia. Metaplasia mean I'm just defining, let's see this is an example I'm showing with the help of a diagram. You can see these are the one kind of the cells. That means one type of the adult cells. Now these are the another kind of cells another type of cells. Now, if these kind of cells, they convert into these kind of cells, this kind of a conversion is taking place. This process is called as metaplasia. Now, what are these kind of cells? These kind of the cells are ciliated columnar epithelial cells. But these kind of cells are stratified squamous epithelial cells. You see, these are single cell, single cell. These are multi-layer cells, single layer and multi-layer cells. So one kind of cell into another kind of cell is called as metaplasia. I will discuss more about metaplasia. So this is the definition: conversion of one kind of adult cell into another kind of the adult cell is called as metaplasia. Now, why? Hey, where we can take this? One of the very common examples is cigarette smokers. Because of the smoke that is inhaled, the ciliated columnar epithelial cells, they are converted into the multi-layered, stratified, stratified means multi-layered, squamous epithelial cells. Reason? You can obviously you can say these single layer cells are more weak, they are susceptible to injury. But when you are having the stratified cells, multi-layered cells, they are much more resistant to the cigarette smoke. So it is an adaptation of the respiratory system to protect from the cigarette smoke. But this kind of adaptation is not useful for the body. Ultimately, if these, this kind of the metastatic cells, metast they can change into the cancer cells and lung cancer can take place. So, this is all about the cell adaptation that I wanted to discuss with you. In the upcoming video, I will discuss the in detail about the hypoxic injury, or, uh, about what are the mechanisms that are involved, and what is the reversible cell injury, what is the irreversible cell injury. Thank you.